I guess I'd like to begin, uh, and I know Milady touched on this, uh, the new strategy of the administration uh, to address the root causes or drivers of migration uh, that was released this past July. Um, and, you know, as she mentioned, focused on issues related to improving security, governance, and the economic conditions in the region. Uh, but I'd like to take a step back um, and ask, you know, what were some of the lessons that, uh, that you took as you were developing the strategy from prior efforts? Um, and how, you know, does the administration's approach differ from previous strategies? Uh, and I'm thinking here primarily uh, of the strategy for engagement with Central America that, as you know, was developed under the leadership of the president uh, when he was uh, vice president at the time. Um, you know, what is the status of the new strategy, given that things, you know, are moving through, through Congress in terms of approval of, of budgets? And, you know, what do you foresee might be some of the biggest obstacles uh, or, I guess, challenges uh, that you may encounter in, in the implementation and, and achieving uh, the desired results? Uh, thanks a lot for that. So first I'll say that the, um, the, the president, the Biden-Harris administration, has committed at the highest levels to focus on Central America. It's an absolute priority. The president um, himself, as you noted, has great experience working on this region, traveled several times, really was um, the leader under the Obama administration for um, efforts focused on addressing root causes in Central America. And very early on in the administration, um, the president put forward an executive order that directed this strategy, that directed the development of the strategy to address root causes of Central America. And it was couched in a broader approach to regional migration. It said, yes, we need reforms at our border. Um, yes, we need to um, create new channels for legal migration from the region to the United States so individuals can who, who need to migrate can apply for those channels from their home. And we also need to focus on root causes of migration in Central America. This is a long-term effort. It's an effort that we are committed to doing um, in a way that learns from lessons of prior efforts um, and, and to doing with um, a good chunk of foreign assistance. Uh, he has committed to pursuing $4 billion over four years with the, um, with the partnership of the US Congress. Uh, but also I think the strategy recognizes and one of our key lessons learned too is that foreign assistance is not um, alone what will um, change conditions in Central America. And it's not, um, it's not alone in its focus of uh, the strategic approach from the U.S. government. What we have committed to do is to um, put a high level of a priority, a high level of diplomatic outreach, persistent diplomatic outreach, um, engagement, um, in a whole of government way, but also a whole of society way. Um, this is this is an effort that requires um, the U.S. government as a strong partner for sure, but many other actors across many other sectors to um, to engage. And one of our, our key lessons learned um, from from prior efforts um, has been that a focus on governance. Uh, has to be at the core of our effort. Um, the strategy, as you know, has several different pillars. All of the pillars must be intertwined and at the, at the core and a common thread throughout all of our efforts has to be, has been, and will continue to be a focus on governance because without, um, with, without democracy, without transparency, without efforts to combat corruption, our, um, our, our efforts in the, um, the realm of private sector investment will be for naught. Our efforts in the realm of security will be for naught. Um, we really need to have the strong underpinning of governance that runs throughout um, or else our efforts won't be successful. Thank you for that. I want to I want to dig a little deeper um, because, you know, as you as you've uh, stated, uh, governance and the rule of law, the issue of, of corruption uh, are the core of the of the strategy. And and I will say, you know, that many of us uh, recognize the statements um, in support of anti-corruption efforts and the actions that the administration has taken to respond uh, to the actions that we've seen that undermine the rule of law across the region. Um, you know, that has included withholding assistance. Um, you know, we've seen in the announcement of targeted visa sanctions. And obviously, we, you know, we wanna see more of that. Um, 
but yet some, you know, have argued uh, that we should back away uh, from the focus on governance and, and anti-corruption or, or perhaps not push as hard uh, and focus instead on encouraging uh, more investment in Central America. And, and I'd like to dig in terms of, you know, can you um, talk to us about your view in terms of how, you know, to bal what the balance should look like? You know, is it really possible to encourage investment um, in a climate of, of systemic corruption and weak governance, in a climate that many have described as really uh, the, the co-optation of, of state institutions across the region. Um, you know, wouldn't uh, investment need to occur in a, contra in a context where you have strong rule of law and fairness and, and where the powerful are, are held really to the same standards as the poor, as the indigenous and Afro descendants. Thanks for that. Um, and I, I want to stress that 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 promotion of, of private sector investment in Central America does not come at the expense of our focus on on governance. In fact, we see it as, in some respects, a a, a force multiplier of supporting element of a, a necessary component. Um, and there was a really interesting panel that we did yesterday with several actors that are engaged in private sector um, engagement, either from the U.S. government trying to facilitate and um, uh, um, uh, and uh, encourage more private sector investment from from the US um, in Central America there were we, we had actors from US companies uh, uh, um, business people from the region that were talking about the efforts of the private sector to promote a good governance agenda uh, that's frankly necessary for them to have success in their private sector endeavors to 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 recruit um, investment for that investment to have the certainty that's needed to to stay and um, um, and be full partners uh, in, in their efforts in Central America. And the private sector can play a really important role in um, demanding that there be a baseline of governance and accountability for them to come in um, and invest. They can pledge to promote a culture of, um, of, of good governance through their own business practices um, and can share that with their partners and subsidiaries in country. Uh, it really is, as I said at the beginning, the, the governance theme is woven throughout all of our efforts. We really do see a, um, a really important role for the private sector to carry forward some key governance reform agenda items. And they're doing so, they'll continue to do so, um, and I expect that we'll see more on that front. Yesterday we heard about a forthcoming pledge um, from uh, companies that are active in the region to uphold um, uh, some of the key values and, um, uh, and, and, and governance baselines that, that, that we're talking about here. Um, and I think too, um, with respect to um, inclusivity um, of economic growth, absolutely. I think we are, um, we're focused, Milady touched on some of this in her efforts as well. We are focused on an, um, an economic growth agenda that involves the investment of US companies in the region, but also is, um, is very mindful that, um, that that our efforts need to focus on diversity, equity, inclusion, and that the um, the economic growth agenda cannot just be located in capitals, cannot just be located in businesses that have a touch with multi um, multinational companies. That this needs to be um, uh, much broader about formalization, uh, digitalization, bringing in people who um, have not previously had access to formal formal networks. Great. Um, I know, you know, Milady in her uh, keynote talked about the importance of, of civil society um, and independent journalists. Um, so I, I'm curious, um, you know, how would you describe the role of civil society and independent journalism in Central America and how uh, does the U.S., how does the administration plan to, to work with these actors? It's key. It is so important. And and so many of the civil society actors are um, incredibly brave, incredibly um, um, forward leaning. They really, they've been, they've been at this, um, this, this work, um, this, this, this task of governance reforms, um, uh, uh, freedom of expression for a long time. Um, and so, on the one hand, we're learning from them. We are. Um, 
we are, are very interested in learning lessons learned, um, learning the context on the ground from civil society actors. Um, and on the other hand, we need to support them in their efforts. We talk a lot about transparency, government transparency. And one of the reasons we do that is because it's transparency is a, um, is a tool that allows for um, information to be published in such a way that there can be an adequate oversight agenda from the part of civil society. It allow, it, transparency is a tool for independent media. Transparency is a tool for freedom of expression so that, so that actors throughout society can have access to performance metrics, um, uh, access to information as to how government systems are working and can adequately hold their leaders accountable. Um, and we see this as an absolute function of civil society. Um, we are supportive, want to be supportive, also recognize that civil society really is the change agent in um, a lot of these countries as well. It is not the US government. It is not foreign assistance. It is not US diplomatic outreach. It is it is the people of, of Central America themselves. Um, and, and we want to be um, in a supporting role um, in a way that really does lift up um, and, uh, uh, and, and support their efforts. To, to expand on that um, a bit, Emily, because you know some of the ses sessions yesterday, uh, and, and Milady also touched on this, discussed the deteriorating environment um, for human rights defenders and, and journalists. And you know you've seen the the closing of spaces for participation, but also an increase in attacks and harassment campaigns to discredit their work. Uh, you've seen, the, uh, frankly, the abuse of legal systems and institutions um, to criminalize them um, in an attempt to silence uh, their work. And then you've seen across the region the passage of laws also, right, that um, are meant to also silence those critics. Um, you know, and yesterday, one of the sessions talked about uh, the role of, of private philanthropy and how um, how can private philanthropy best support those critical efforts and you know given this complex uh, context for for civil society and journalists um, you know and given the interests of the administration uh, to really lift up those voices and and support those efforts you know given the context has um, how has this informed or shaped the plans of the administration in terms of how do you see the role of the administration and donors dealing with um, with uh, this deteriorating environment? Uh, thanks for that question and thanks for the focus on the issue. I think we are we absolutely condemn um, when we see a closing of space for civil society, when we see attacks on freedom of expression, when we see attacks on um, the the carrying out of, of justice and the erosion of the independence of the of the judicial systems. Um, and we are very interested in seeing those actors supported, protected, um, uh, protected in their home countries first and foremost foremost, um, um, and if not, inadequate systems outside of their home countries. Um, we endeavor to support through um, engagement with um, U.S. government officials, but also through um, our, um, our engagement with um, uh, with government actors themselves, so that the leadership of the of the countries is is aware of what is happening, um, mindful of our intense interest, and mindful of our um, of our condemnation of um, of actions that run contrary to our values. And um, we've made the, those messages clear through public statements. We've made them clear through the use of some of our sanctions tools as well. We'll continue to do so, and we'll endeavor to to support those actors um, in 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 ways that are appropriate. And we'll underscore what I've said again, that, that, that civil society really is um, and the, pr the protection of freedom of speech um, and the ability for these actors to do their work um, unencumbered really is at the at the core of what we assess will be um, uh, part of Central America's success. Thank you, Emily. I'm, I'm in I have uh, a lot of more questions. I think we can continue, you know, this conversation, but um, in the interest of time, um, I think we're going to have to draw to a close. But I, I wanted to thank you again for participating and, and really look forward to, to continuing the discussion, to continuing the engagement uh, with the administration in these important issues.
Thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Thanks for this forum, for these important discussions. We are committed to learn, to grow, to continue to adapt our approach. And so um, appreciate forums like this, uh, conversations like this, the expertise from many of the folks who are participating um, here and in these panels to um, inform our approach going forward. Uh, it really is invaluable.